Hi friends, welcome back to Calm in the Chaos Homeschool. If you're new here, my name is Devine and I homeschool four kids ages 11, 12, 12, and 15. And today I'm going to be sharing with you my seventh graders curriculum. <laughs> Now, when I started recording this video, I have actually recorded my seventh graders curriculum at this point. I thought that I was going to be doing first my seventh graders curriculum, and then I was going to be doing my eighth graders curriculum after that. And this would have been the first time that I would have broken up my girls curriculum like that. However, I feel like they're doing different enough things to be making kind of doing them in their own little sections. But I was planning on combining that into one video. And after I recorded my seventh graders video, I realized that it is too long to add my eighth graders to that. So I do encourage you to watch both my seventh graders video and my eighth graders video because my seventh grader is doing a lot of things at an eighth or ninth grade level. And my eighth grader, she struggles a little more academically. So we do have to adjust what we do with her. So. I'm going to be putting up my seventh graders video today and then a few days I will be putting up my eighth graders video. This is not how I intended to set things up, but it was just getting too long. So I hope you enjoyed today's video and come back for my eighth graders video in a few days. So let's get started on my seventh graders math, language arts, electives, sort of the independent work that she does and her term two curriculum updates. So first of all, every week I print out a sheet like this for my seventh grader and hers has two sides because hers has, this is mostly the regular work that she's doing. And then on the other side, it is her Mandarin. So I'll go through that when we get to that. And I'm just going to use this as a guide to make sure I don't miss anything, but I will hand her something like this and she will use this to plan out her things on her planner. So she takes the reins on that. She decides when she wants to do what. She is pretty self-motivated. She does usually finish her work by Thursday and it's not because she has a lack of work. You will see my pile of work here for her and the subjects that she does do quite a lot, but I have had to stop giving her stuff just because she finishes stuff early. So we're gonna get into this. So the first thing I'm gonna talk about is math. So for math this year, she has been using Think Well Math, and that is an online program, though I did get the worksheet sent to me, and I have, so I have the worksheets, and then I have the lessons, um, basically a page on each lesson that they do, and then I have answer keys and all that kind of stuff. If you order Think Well Math, you can just get the plain online program where you will be able to print off all of these worksheets. So this is part B. So there's two that are about this thick. Um, I split it into two because it couldn't fit all in one. And then I have the answer key as well. You would get this as a PDF online. There's a teacher who teaches short little lessons to explain the concept. She really does enjoy the video lessons. They are short and to the point. And then each day's work is not too overwhelming in general. I'm just gonna open up to a random page. So here is an example of a day's work. So she would have to do that. So it looks like two examples about a scatter plot. Let's see, collecting and describing data. And that's it for that, for that day. Obviously different days have different amounts of work. Here's one here, polygons. And so that is one page like that. And yeah, so that would be one day as well. However, when it comes to reviews, there are often like four pages like this, and that becomes quite overwhelming when she's doing the review pages. So it does have a pacing guide. However, we have found that when it comes to review days, it can be quite a lot of work. So I would say that's one of her least favorite parts is when there's a review day before a test. And then another thing that we've had issues with here on and off is there's a few concepts that she did not understand and I didn't go and watch the video. I don't feel like I have time to go watch the video. So I'll often look at the answer key and then I can usually teach from the answer key so I can go through the steps and we can figure it out that way. But there are a few types of problems that we just didn't get. 
I didn't get, I didn't understand it, and I didn't feel like she needed to know in pre-algebra. So this is pre-algebra or math eight with Thinkwell Math. And so I think that I've had to help her with math a little more than I would like to. I like math to be a pretty hands-off as far as teaching goes. I don't mind helping kids when they have mistakes, but I am looking for programs that mark their work, which this one doesn't, they don't mark the worksheets, but I've basically been giving her the answer key. So she'll do her worksheets and then she will check over her answers. And she's the kind of student that she knows she has to understand it before she gets to the test. So she's not gonna copy the answer keys. She is going to do it the way it's supposed to. And then they do have online questions as well throughout. So that's how math has been going for us. I would say we do like it. She likes the video lessons. She doesn't mind most of the work. We have run into a few issues where I can't help her or I feel like it might be a little more advanced than she needs to know in pre-algebra at this time. And the video lesson obviously did not teach her well enough for her to know without me going and doing more research on it. So that's how we're doing with math. I do recommend Thinkable Math. If you have mathy kids or you're a mathy person yourself and you know this math already, I think it would go really great. And we have enjoyed it. Just a few, a few little things here and there that we don't like as much. All right, next on her list is her personal devotions. So she's been doing two different things. We have one here that is the Word of Life devotional. And we've been working on this quite some time. Actually, she might've stopped on this. So I give her a choice. She can do this if she wants. And this is basically a page like this. They have something to read and you have a few questions to answer. The other thing I said that she could do is with Sunlight, they give you a reading program or a reading plan for the child to go through themselves. And so basically she is going through Psalms. So I gave her a checklist like this. So each day she will read one chapter in Psalms. So like Psalms 36, she will pick a verse that she likes the most from that and copy it in here. And then she will write a little prayer. So I think she's actually been doing that more than the word of life, which is an option for her. And then once a week, she has been working on this. So this is not consumed, do right. So I gave her options on some not consumed Bible studies that we haven't gotten to yet. And she chose to do this one. So she's just doing this once a week and that will take 20 weeks to finish. So next we have language arts and our main language arts curriculum this year is EIW. So Essentials in Writing Level 8. So this one has been probably our least favorite curriculum that we are still using this year. We haven't stopped using it. She has been okay with this. I probably should have gotten her seven. I didn't realize how advanced it was. The first half has been grammar lessons. And those have gone okay. There are some grammar lessons that I think are just a little bit more complicated than they need to be. And we've been waiting to get to the last half, which is the writing section. And I will say that we have just started in the writing section. So I don't have a huge opinion on the writing section yet. I don't feel like we've been doing the writing section long enough to give my review on that. So EIW, it's not what I hoped it would be. They do have short video lessons, which is something she liked. She really did not like the long EIW lessons. She also did not like the formulaic type style writing that EIW has. She is my creative writer. She does write pretty well naturally. So a formula like EIW didn't work great for her. So I was looking for something else. I'm looking for something that will kind of guide her through the steps, but not make it too formulaic. I would love to ask you guys. I do have a language arts picked out for next year. I think it'll be good for next year, but I think it's only going to last us one year. So I'm still thinking about her high school language arts and what we could use for writing in particular. I'm not worried about any of the other part of language arts. We have a lot of literature that we do in our homeschool. Grammar, I have no issue with. We've got lots of grammar, vocabulary, things like that. I just want writing. So I want your writing suggestions for high school writing. If you have a high schooler who is doing a writing curriculum that you really enjoy, that is not EIW, that is not IEW, I would love to know, let me know, put that in the comment section below and help me out in my research for her ninth grade year. 
All right, we also have for language arts, reading detective, she is doing, this is B1. So for seventh and eighth graders, I would say this is about the right level for her. She does struggle a little bit in it. She does ask for help, but I guess that's just stretching her and growing her. What it looks like is it will have a passage and then they will have some questions. They will ask you to cite where you found the answers to the questions. So they will ask you like, what sentence gave you that information or what paragraph gave you that information. I think it's been really good for reading comprehension and I'm hoping to see some improvement on reading comprehension when we do our standardized tests. She does generally score really well on those tests, but I always feel like that's something my kids can be working on. As far as that, like the reading comprehension and being able to prove what you read and being able to cite why you think something is true. Another language art component that she is doing is Gordley Wise Level 8. She does not love this, but I think it's good. I like how they have the activities, they teach different words, and then they have different activities to show how you can use those words, different forms of the word. I think it's just a great way to expand her vocabulary. She does have a pretty good vocabulary, but I would say this is still a challenge for her. And so I did get a level up because her vocabulary is quite strong. And in general, I would say Wordly Wise is pretty challenging. So I think this is a good level for her. We are working on this slowly. I'm not planning on finishing it this year. Probably have about a third of the rest of this next year. And then we'll just start level nine when we get to that point. This next one is just an easy fun thing that my girls are doing. This would totally be suitable for elementary school. These are very simple little writing prompts and not even, you don't have to write very much in each of them. I just wanted to give them something fun that they could do. So this I have scheduled maybe twice a week. They do like two, two of these writing prompts. So we're not gonna get through this all, but I just wanted to have something a little fun in their language arts curriculum. She is also working on uh, the Good and the Beautiful Handwriting level seven. So this is the last of the levels. She has been through a lot of them. I'm not sure exactly what level she started with when we started homeschooling. Maybe third level, maybe fourth level. I'm not sure if she was doing cursive before we started or not. I can't remember. She probably wasn't. So I'm guessing we probably started her on level three. So seventh level is the last one. She'll be finishing this off probably at the end of the school year and we'll be done with handwriting. I don't think that continuing to finish all the handwriting is super, super important, but my kids do like the good and the beautiful handwriting and it is just something kind of fun to add into their language arts. So it's been working well for our family and she's going to be completing the last level. Another thing that we have not been super successful with this year is this. This is Not Consumes Reading Journal for grades six to eight. These are guided reading book studies. So they have fiction and nonfiction ones. And so they take you through the process. They have pre-reading activity. They have day two, talking about the setting, day three, narration, like day four, connection, day five, questioning, application, worldview, things like that. And then they write a report at the end. I have not been assigning this for her. So I would say she did one maybe in the first term and then this has just been sitting on her shelf and she's just been reading and doing like written narration. So for my kids generally, I will have them do like an oral narration one day on the books that they're reading and then they'll do a written narration. So she just has a notebook where she writes a page about what happened. My other kids have reading logs. So they have the elementary version of this. So we do oral narration and reading log for other kids. She's doing the written narration just in the notebook, oral narration, and then reading logs. And then they do a science reading day. So I'll talk about that a bit when we get to science. So the two books that she's been reading most recently is The Green Bicycle. So this is set in somewhere in the Middle East. And so we were just studying Middle Eastern culture last term. So that is one that she just finished reading. And then she is starting this. This is also Middle East, I think. Is this Middle East or are we into India? No, no, now we're into India. So this one is A Moment Comes. She's just starting this one. 
If you want to hear more about either of these books, you can check out our living books that I'm using for the Middle East video and living books that I'm using for India videos. I've been making a series talking about different books that I'm using as we travel around the world. So world geography and cultures. And so I will link a playlist below if you want to see all the books that we're using throughout the year or books that my kids can choose from when we're studying these countries and cultures. So next, that brings us to science. This is the first year my seventh and eighth grader have done science on their own. Last year and all the years before, we did it as a family. So that was a group subject or family subject. So this year, especially my seventh grader, she wanted to do some things more on her own. So I chose for her to do science. So she has been doing some of this. So this is Bookshark H, and this is Conservation Robotics and Technology. And what I have in this binder is I have photocopied all the teacher the grids so that she knows what to do here. So I'll just tell her do week one, day one, or week 26, day two. And so she will follow, she's following the grid here. Four out of five days, she's doing that. So she does something from Bookshark H. And then there's generally a reading to do. So for example, right now, she's reading in this book, Energy, and we'll tell her to read a few pages. So she'll read a few pages in here. And then at the back of this binder, I have a little tab. At the back of the binder, she has her worksheets. So I just have all the worksheets here ready for her to answer. And the guide will tell her what she needs to fill out. So that is what she's doing for science four out of five days. And then on the other day, what she's doing for science is mostly we've been going through a few of these different books. So maybe two or three of these books this year. So right now she's working on exploring the world of mathematics. This wasn't one that I had planned on having her do, but I took a look at it and I was reading it and it just sounded super interesting to me. So I thought it went well with what she's learning as far as she's doing more physics and robotics and stuff like that. So this one seemed to be a good fit. And then what she does is she has a notebook like this. And actually this is a notebook that she designed the cover herself. I uploaded it on to KDP, so you can buy this on Amazon if you want a book like this. And then we have a bunch of other different covers as well, but basically the interior is going to be the same. And so I'm just going to show you, I don't think she'll mind if I show you an example. Let's find a, a nice example here. So she is not using her nicest handwriting here, but anyways, she will read the section that I tell her to read. And so she'll write that here, the world of mathematics, and she's supposed to put the chapter number, which she didn't, and the date. And she will write a summary of what she read that day. And then I just want her to draw an illustration, something like that. And so basically these pages are laid out like that. We have an area for an illustration and I have some lines here so you can write a title or the date. I have some lines here for a caption. And then here is where she does the narration. So this is how she usually sets it up. The world of mathematics, what chapter, what pages, and the date. And she does her narration there. So that is something, something like that. We do that once a week. And then, like I was saying, for her reading, I have her reading her novel four days a week. And then on the fifth day, she is reading a book like this. So right now she's reading Galileo and the Magic Numbers. And she will just do a narration in here when she's done. So she just has them mixed up, it's fine. So she has this here. She has what she read in Galileo, a narration, and then her picture or drawing for that, for that chapter or chapters that she read in here. So that is how she's doing her science this year. And then as far as geography, we are doing that mostly as a family subject. However, my seventh and eighth grader, they are doing a little bit on the side because I am counting this towards a high school credit. So I wanted them to be doing some more to make sure it's a high school level. So they are working through Guest Hollow's course. They are doing the online textbook and the worksheets that go along with that course. And I'm just lining them up with what we're doing as a family. So what she will do when it's assigned is she will go online, she will read the textbook reading, and then she will do some of the worksheets here. So they always have a workbook here. They have a fun, fun workbook. I just like their color and the way they ask questions. Just kind of fun. 
but this is something that she is doing as we go through the different countries and cultures. She's reading the textbook and answering questions in the workbook here. And then she has two electives that she's working on right now. She is doing this. This is from Artistic Pursuits. It is one of their new middle school curriculum. This is part two of what you would consider a whole year program. We just decided to do like half of a year program. So she is painting with acrylics this year. So intermediate art core four. And so this is something new that she has been using this year. Let me know if you would like a flip through of this because I actually have realized that I have never seen anyone talk about these new artistic pursuit books yet. So I can do a flip through and show you maybe some of the projects that she did with this if you're interested. So let me know if you're interested in that. We have really enjoyed artistic pursuits as far as an art curriculum. We keep going back every year to see what they have and yeah, so you're probably going to be seeing some artistic pursuits in my curriculum picks videos that are coming up soon. Okay, and the last elective that she is working on, and we are doing this slowly because I feel like a subject like this, doing it slower, taking your time, is just a better strategy than trying to cram everything in all at once. So in our homeschool, I have been working with my kids on Mandarin Chinese for three years now. And this particular daughter is adopted from Taiwan. She actually was born in the city that I grew up in. And so she chose as her second language for high school, Mandarin Chinese, which obviously is a great choice for her, especially if she ever wants to go back and spend some time in Taiwan. And so I kind of, it's hard to find a curriculum uh, to lead you through that because it's just not one of those languages that you see a lot of. So I got a whole bunch of books to look at and I flipped through them all and I ended up with choosing a few books here that I am working with her on. So we have this one, Learning Conversational Chinese, Mandarin Chinese for Beginners. And so this is her conversation book. So we have this book. And so I will just schedule a few pages here and then we'll do a little bit of conversations and stuff for her tests. And I've just been kind of creating my own curriculum using this along with this here. So basic written Chinese. And so this has been something I've been learning sort of alongside her. I do read and write some Chinese, very minimal amount of Chinese, I will say. So I'm learning along with her. I do like how this is set up. So they'll teach you a few different characters. They'll tell you what they are. They'll tell you how to say them. And then you will practice reading them. So I have been so far having her make flashcards for the new words. And then we will go through and we will try to read as much of this as we can. And so that's been challenging for me as well as for her. But so far I can follow along pretty well. And I think when she has like flashcards was a new thing. As she makes the flashcards, we'll be able to just have the card in front of us, the ones that we have the most struggle with. And so when we hit those words, we'll be able to look at the flashcard really quick and figure out what it is. And I think that will help us progress a bit more. But like I said, we are doing this slowly. Basically, I will sign a short section of Chinese for her one day, and then I'll have her do Duolingo for 20 minutes the next day, and then a short section of Chinese the next day. And so basically I plan on doing like a half credit of Chinese each year, even though she's working on it every day, I'm just going to do a half credit of Mandarin Chinese at this point. So I think that this book should be a two year program, I think with all the different topics that are in there. And then if she can get like even halfway through written Chinese like this, that would be impressive. <laughs> she would be able to read quite a bit so I think that'll be good for a two-year program. So we'll just, we'll just see how things go. I also have this basic written Chinese practice essentials. So this is just a copy work, copy work book. So you, you practice the Chinese characters. So that is what she is doing for Manor Chinese. And that covers my seventh graders independent work and her curriculum. As you can see, it is quite a lot, and so we are gearing up for the next year. It is going to be her eighth grade year. However, at this point, we're going to be halfway through her high school geography credit. So we're gonna finish that up so that she'll get her first geography credit next year or first high school geography credit next, next year. 
as well as the science. I'm going to count that as a high school science credit for her. And so she'll have that at the end of this year. And then Mandarin Chinese, like I said, we're just doing it slowly. So maybe a half, well, I'll give her a half credit in Mandarin Chinese, or we'll just wait till I feel like we've done one year's worth. And then I'll give her a credit of Mandarin Chinese maybe in the next school year. Okay, so that is everything that I have to show you for my seventh graders curriculum. And I'm sure you can tell why I had to cut this up into two videos and not start on my eighth graders curriculum. It went quite long. I didn't expect it to go so long. So come back in a few days to see my eighth graders curriculum. And until then, I hope you guys have a good day homeschooling and I will see you all later. Bye everyone.